And death is actually an illusory reference. It's a reference to what we have in this world. What you, what you, all you have in this world is actually some form of death. You know, the Prophet ﷺ was told, "Innaka mayyitun wa innahu mayyitun," which translates into a number of things. It could mean you're gonna die and they're gonna die. You're no doubt you're gonna die and no doubt they're gonna die. But actually, as a jumla ismi, it also suggests you are already dying and so are they. You're already dying. We're experiencing a little bit of death every day. Our life is running out. There's, if you experience, if you think of death as worldly death, as the running out of your human life, the complete running out of human life, and that little sand is going through the hourglass, a little bit of it is going through every single day, every single minute. So we're experiencing droplets of death constantly. Con and then a taste of it is given to us every night when we go to sleep. That's why Alhamdulillah الذي أحيانا بعدما أماتنا You know, so he, he alludes to sleep as death too. So we're actually, in this world, we are, our exhaustion, our bodies decaying over time as we age, all of these are actually miniature aspects of death and of course the ultimate decay is in the grave when the body completely goes through decay but it's not like it's not going through decay now what I was capable of doing how I was capable of exerting my physical body when I was 18 is not where I am now it's not going to be the same it's not going to be the same 30 years from now you know or 40 years from now it's not going to be you know the, the, the wrinkles on our skin we can't control doesn't matter how much Botox you do you know The, the eyesight getting weaker, the hearing, the hearing loss, the hair going away, things are gonna, things are gonna happen to our body. These are all actually mini, miniature deaths of some parts of our body. You know, it's not your whole being that's died, it's some part of you is constantly dying. So what I'm trying to say is when he says he created death, it's actually a reference to what, ho what happens in life to you right now. And he created life, which is the ultimate life, Where is there an institute? When does the, the phase of our existence begin? When there is no more deterioration, you stay exactly as you are. Akhirah. So actually this is a reference to he created worldly life, which culminates in death. And he created the ultimate life thereafter, which lasts forever. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ And if you look at it from that point of view, then actually the rest of the ayah makes complete sense. The, the, the reason that compels me to look at this interpretation more than the others, is that it, it makes the last part of this ayah fit beautifully. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So he may test you. Let's just stop there. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ So he may test all of you. Look, if death, if this was referring to like not the, the life that's coming afterwards, And there's no point in mentioning a test. Why is this life a test for the believer? How, you know, a, a test is something which you either pass or fail, by definition. When there's an ibtila or a bala, you either pass it or you fail it. When are we gonna know if we passed or failed? When are this, when is the benefits of passing or the consequences of failing faced by the human being? After death. In the next life. That's when I get to see whether I passed or failed. Otherwise, if that's not my concern, none of this is actually a really a test. It's just stuff I go through right now that has no consequences other than right now. The only reason you can, you and I can call this a test is because in a test you're being evaluated and your value comes forward in the next life. The value of what you did or didn't do comes forward in the next life. So he created the institution of death and life thereafter so that he may put all of you to the test. So he may, may test all of you. Subhanallah.